now we are studying the conventional abrasive processes wherein uh, we have seen the grinding process, uh, honing process, lapping, super finishing, sand blasting, micro blasting, vibratory finishing and tumbling processes we have seen. Now we move on to the pitch polishing. The pitch polishing is one of the good process for the lens polishing as well as for the mirrors polishing applications. As you can see here, this is the lens basically which is polished by the trial and error methods of the operator. Normally, pitch is one type of polymer along with abrasives which you uh, and this type of uh, pads, there will be some pads will be available where you can use this uh, this pitch and you can do it by trial and error method. Normally, it started with trial and error method. Nowadays, this also can be uh, this is automated technologies are there which you can see in the upcoming slides. This is a similar to lapping process, but special is nothing but here the pitch is used which is slightly different from lapping fluids. Optical pitch polishing process has been used more than 300 years to obtain high quality optical surface. That means, that this particular process is hugely used for optical industry for the lens polishing. Assume that I want to polish this type of lenses or something lenses. So, you can use this type of pitch polishing techniques. Pitch polishing pitch was first introduced by Sir Isaac Newton in the 1700s and has since been used produced in high quantity high quality optical surfaces finishing applications you can use. Pitch is usually in a dark color which is a viscoelastic at room temperature. Okay. It will have viscous component, it will have elastic component. Viscous component can help you in moving along the direction of uh, motion that is given by the external source at the same time elastic component will try to move perpendicular to it so that you can get the finishing. This viscoelastic effect and other things you will see whenever I am teaching abrasive finishing processes in advanced level. That means, that advanced abrasive finishing processes whenever I am going to deal there one of the processes is abrasive flow finishing process. There you will observe what is this viscous effect, what is this elastic effect and how this viscous and elastic effects are going to help the abrasive particle to finish in a nano scale that those things you will clear these basics in that particular process. Okay. Time being you whatever I explained you that viscous component uh, of this pitch will move along the direction of external energy that means, that in the previous slide the operator is moving like this. So, if at all I want to move like this that my pitch viscous component move try to move in this direction and elastic component moves perpendicular to it. So, that it will indent and this will create the shearing. So, that you can remove the surface peaks and you will get a mirror surface finish and this can be used for optical applications. The pitch tool consists of metal pattern coated with a layer of polishing pitch whereby pitch is highly viscoelastic metal driven from the trees resin. Normally, this is naturally taken material. There are two varieties one is a natural pitches another one is a synthetic pitches salts there. So, natural pitches are like taken from the tree resins. Synthetic versions nothing but synthetic pitches also produce at room temperature this are stiff brittle material with the shore D hardness values ranging from 70 to 83. That means, the shore hardness normally used for measuring the hardness of very soft materials like rubber elastomers and other things. So, normally this pitch shore hard T hardness ranges from 70 to 83. The pitch polishing researchers have done extensive work on investigating the polishing process aspects such as pitch properties because pitch properties play a major role. You in order to understand those it is itself is a very big study. So, tool parameters tool also pitch tool also is the another input parameter and slurry composition and slurry interactions and other things. Chemical and mechanical properties of uh, also play a major role. Tool slurry and workpiece interactions will also play a major role. Workpiece material, which type of workpiece material, whether I am using 
fused silica for as a workpiece material whether I am using a polymer lenses as my workpiece material that will also play a major role because the hardness of this will uh, of this materials will drastically changes from fused silica which is a ceramic to a polymer. And basic process parameters such as uh, polishing load and relative velocity will play also major role. How much load that you are giving at the same time how fast you are rotating. If you are rotating by a manual method then you cannot rotate at constant speed for that purpose people nowadays are going for automatic machines. Okay. Experimental setups these are some of the experimental setups that are available and you can see the lenses many lenses are uh, there and you can do it for mass finishing applications. Pitch polishing uh, principle pitch is adhered to the polishing tool which is the inverse of the radius of optic being polished. The tool with pitch will be placed on the optic and rubbed against which much like a grinding process. You just take the lens that is there you take a pitch tool and you put the slurry as well as the pitch then you do the operation by applying certain load at your required speed. This will act as a grinding process also because basic thing that we have as a mechanical engineers which we see the basic this is as a grinding process. As the polishing process continues the pitch slowly conformed to the shape of the optic so that the surface of the optic is smooth out and it will and overall radius is not changed. That means that this pitch is this initially at the room temperature it may be bit high viscous as you increase the temperature sensitiveness will increase normally this all viscoelastic material. I cannot say all the most of the viscoelastic materials and which comes these pitches this whatever the pitch polishing techniques which uses the pitch also comes under viscoelastic materials most of these pitches are temperature sensitive with respect to time the temperature goes up if the temperature goes up this you get low viscous and it confines to the complete area and to avoid removing debris grooves and cut along the pitch to allow the slurry to flow more radially between the normally this pitch you can give some of the scratch normally if you see the polishing tool will be like this wherein pitch will be there uh, in the pitch they will make this type of grooves ok. So, this type of grooves are there whenever these grooves are provided on a pitch what will happen the chips which are there are something assume that this particular cross section if I want to take. So, it will look like a like this ok. This is the pitch where is there and whatever the chips that are coming out may embed here. So, that it would not disturb the finishing process. For that purpose the grooves are provided you I think okay, you may see this type of pictures in the upcoming slides. The hole is also cut in the pitch at the center of the tool since the pitch will be flow towards the edges the center of the tool during the polishing that means that there will be a hole. So, what I mean to say is that uh, the pitch try to move out towards the edges or pitch try to move towards the center or the edges for that purpose you will have a hole at the center. Different types of glasses and lens polishing if you see the glass polishing techniques there are full aperture that is conventional methods and sub aperture non conventional methods. In the conventional methods there is a fitch polishing is one of the technique that is commonly used then there is a polyurethane teflon polishing float polishing fixed abrasive polishing is these are the techniques which are used in a conventional way at the same time in a non conventional way iron beam polishing plasma polishing MRF polishing elastic emission polishing will be used ok. So, these are the there are two varieties one conventional and non conventional then we are seeing the conventional type. The main components are pitch polishing or pitch tool pitch uh, polishing pitch and polishing slurry these are the three varieties and the pitch tool as I said you will get the pitch layer 
at the same time metal substrate will be there on which the load will be applied as i was telling you there will be a grooves are generated so that the chips that are generated microchips or nano chips will go and occupy this grooves so that it won't disturb the finishing process pitch tool consists of layers of pitch and on a metal substrate this layer thickness varies user to user and could find few millimeters to several centimeters also okay and the life span of such tooling ranges from few days to uh, for smaller tools for few years for a larger tools that means that this thickness gradually decreases with respect to number of components that you want to finish at the same time what is the load that you are applying and other things polishing pitch primarily derived from the pine tree which is a natural source the other things are that you can also generate from the petroleum based pitch which are commercially named as cycad and these are the commonly for the wood based pitches like the gulgoj and this synthetic versions also available and should be under the trademark of aculap these are the companies that we will produces the different types of pitches for natural pitch the basic properties slightly vary from batch to batch because if you are taking out in a winter if you are taking about in a summer then the properties slightly will vary okay at the same time the possible variations include evaporation of solvent added to the natural pitches control the hardness value that means that you have to add some of the solvents to the natural pitches so that you can vary the viscous and elastic components and other things and if the elastic component is more normally the hardness will be more the synthetic versions developed in the laboratory are more susceptible and consistent because the synthetic ones are developed as per your requirement i know this much elastic component required i know this much viscous component is required so that you can develop your own but naturally available you have to take the natural uh what are the properties that have but only thing that you can use is you can use some of the solvents to modify it that's all but you cannot decide whatever the you required whatever you the properties that you require these are the polishing pitches if you see at the room temperature pitches are stiff highly viscous and other things which are act as a brittle materials and it is ability to flow under the pressure and which enables different removal rates between high and low contact points because if you are applying certain load what will happen if it is very brittle the stiff if the pitch is very stiff then it will causes uh, material higher material removal rate and despite advantages of some limitations also is there some of the natural pitches contain solvent which may dry out with respect to time because the temperature will increase if the temperature increases what will happen that solvents will goes off then the pitch will become more stiff so the material removal rate will be very high and the roughness will increase that means that nano polishing you may not get all types of pitches are temperature sensitive that means that 5 degrees change in temperature can change the pitch grade that means that hardness as we have seen in the grinding process the pitch grade also will change beside this pitch polishing is very slow material removal process that means that specific energy requirement for this pitch polishing will be very high the material removal is very slow but the input energy is very high this is also one of the drawbacks of polishing pitch now we go to the second component that is a polishing slurry polishing slurry consists of abrasive liquid mixtures normally water typically is a liquid different abrasive particles are used in a pitch polishing process depend on the workpiece material commonly used are cerium oxide uh, compared to other abrasive particles like al2o3 that is alumina iron oxide zirconium oxide silicon carbide cubic boron nitrate diamond other things but commonly for the lens polishing applications people will use cerium oxide which is nothing but ceria will be used and ceria is very popular polishing compound for a variety of optical materials and you can see the properties of this ceria here the density uh, and melting point young's modulus hardness crystallography solubility of water this is uh, 
it is a insoluble one and you have a better properties of uh, cerium oxide for lens polishing or the glass polishing applications. At the same time this also chemically react with the workpiece material that their chemical composition have profound influence on the polishing process and process outcomes. That means that the if at all you are using this type of uh, ceramic particles these are stable and this may not react, but the pitch which you are getting synthetically developed or which you are getting from the plants or wood this all have their own chemical properties which influence the finishing process. The output responses if you see the surface quality this particular thing I will explain you in deep in the upcoming slides normally the profile roughness will be there. If you see here this is the roughness and this is the waviness and this is the flatness height. Normally if you see these two your surface will be like this. This is called profile roughness that is normally represent by PRA which you can divide into waviness and you can divide into roughness. Okay. So, these two gives test to profile roughness. These are all things I will explain you in the upcoming classes where the surface properties you should know all these things in the upcoming slides. Subsurface damage, the subsurface damage if you want to see this is a surface and uh, normally there will be if you are going for the grinding applications and other things what will happen the forces are very high if the forces are very high then there will be a subsurface damage cracks and other things. But in the pitch polishing these things may not happen. In the pitch polishing this may not happen because the interaction forces are very less. The other process that you can use is the pad polishing we can use the abrasive slurry here and you can use for slightly applications like uh, polishing or buffing applications you can use the pad polishing. Now we move on to the pad polishing after the pitch polishing. There are three basic finishing processes that we are looking at one is pitch polishing, pad polishing and hybrid version of the pad polishing that is called chemomechanical polishing. So, even though you directly go to the chemomechanical polishing, but however just we will give you some of the glimpse because the pad polishing and CMP approximately similar only thing is that CMP is slightly advanced version or the hybrid version of pad polishing. So, the polymer particle aided polishing here you will have a pads, but you do not have any soft pad you will have a particles which are used along with the polymer then you can do the finishing operation. You can see this supply of the slurry containing the polymer particles you just supply the polymer particles then your disc will be there at the bottom the pad will be there and then the finishing will take place. Originally later what is developed is the pad polishing. Pad polishing this is the one sided pad polishing where you have the polishing pad at the same time you have the work pieces and you have the pad slurry supply and other things only thing is that you have to give some relative motion with respect to work piece and the pad cost of the supply of the abrasive slurry. The abrasive slurry has to be always fit to the pad polishing so that the finishing will take place in a better way. You can see here the surface morphology of polyurethane pads most commonly in pad polishing or chemomechanical polishing polyurethane based pads are used. Why these polyurethane pads are used and other things regarding the characteristics we will see in the upcoming slides. Polyurethane is a characterized by the pores and asperities which are connected in the body surface. These are the pores which are there on a polyurethane at the same time if you take a cross sectional lateral view you can see the asperities. This asperities and pores will host the abrasive slurry and whenever you apply certain pressure and do the polishing operation normally the abrasive particles which are super fine enough they will do the polishing operation using this pad polishing on the work pieces. So, another variety is hydrophilic fixed abrasive pad polishing process. The development of fixed abrasive pad using the water swelling mechanism 
of the polymer binder network is done. They said that is why it is called as hydrophilic uh, fixed abrasive pad polishing. This is the overview. You can see lot of striations are there wherein you can hold the abrasives and do the finishing process. The preparation of hydrophilic fixed abrasive pad, how this can be prepared? You will have the PEG, polyethylene glycol, then you can see the expansion of this one. Normally, hydrophilic binder you will use 4 is to 1, 5 is to 1, this is the commercially available, and you will have polyethylene glycol mono methacrylate that is second one also is there, then trimethylyl propane trimethacrylate is there, then you can also use urethane and the polymer mixing can be done, then you can add some of the abrasive particles also and you can just put into the steering system, then you can print this mixed polymers along with the abrasive particles that gel on a sub printing that means that you have a desired shape of the print so that you will get a specified print abrasive layer. This print abrasive layer is in the gel form, now you have to cure, the you, you can do the UV curing, normally the UV curing do the cross linking and other things, so that you will get a sample of the hydrophilic fixed abrasive pad. This cutting you can do, then you can do the adhesion to the substrate, then you can do adhesion to the substrate, now fixed abrasive pad is achieved. This way the fixed abrasive pad can be developed. This is a just a raw procedure in intricate details may be much much bigger. So, some people who are interested they can go through the original documents. And you can see the surface roughness abrasive particle hash 100, 600 and 1000 as you increase the mesh size what will happen the particle size will reduce and you are going to get a super fine surface using hydrophilic fixed abrasive pad. Now, we are moving into a another pad polishing technique which is a hybrid version. Till now just a glimpse of pad polishing I have given, there it is just a conventional slurry. You have some oils or water along with the abrasive particles you will add, but in the chemo mechanical polishing you will use some of the passivating chemicals along with the abrasive particles also. Now, the contents of this chemo mechanical polishing, you can see here introduction to chemo mechanical polishing principle, what is the infrastructure required, what are the variables, material removal rate and how the mathematical relation will be there between the chemo mechanical polishing process and materials and defect and issues, what are there using the chemo mechanical polishing process and applications. Normally, this is used in mostly in electronic industry. So, introduction to chemo mechanical polishing you can see here CMP that is acronym for the chemo mechanical polishing is adopted by IBM in 80s for silicon polishing basically. Chemical mechanical polishing or chemo mechanical polishing is defined as a process of smoothing the surface to the combination of chemical and mechanical forces. That means, that you are going to use some chemical for making a chemical reaction on the surface, then you are going to use the abrasive particles for abrading the surface. So, that material removal will be improved along with the superfine surface also. Chemo mechanical polishing of silicon wafers is a basic process of technology for production of flat defect free high reflective surfaces. Normally, as I said this particular process is basically uses for silicon industry and widely accepted planar method. Normally, this CMP stands for chemo mechanical polishing or chemical mechanical polishing or the another name also given by some of the people that is called chemo mechanical planarization or chemical mechanical planarization. Instead of polishing, they may also call as planarization process. So, CMP stands for chemo mechanical polishing or chemo mechanical planarization. Why it this name is given is because planarization method of choice approximately for less than 0.5 microns technologies. That means, that you need a very good uh, 
planar radiation surfaces or the plane surfaces. That is why this process is also called as chemomechanical planar radiation. You can see the principle of chemomechanical process or the chemomechanical polishing. You have a chemical technology, you have mechanical technology, then it will lead to chemomechanical technology. How it is leading? The Bracey principle uses chemical reaction to soften the material. This chemical is going to make the surface smooth. The surface layers of your substrate will become smooth because of the chemical reaction that is taking place between this particular chemical and mechanical action will be further followed because you have the slurry, the slurry will have abrasive particles and this will do the polishing process so that you will get a better surface and mechanical polishing will be done by the abrasive particle. Thus, CMP have the both chemical and mechanical type of material removal mechanisms. That means that it has the two positives, one is chemical, another one is a mechanical. So, what is chemomechanical polishing? How it looks like? This is the chemomechanical polishing setup wherein you have a wafer, normally wafer will be polyurethane wafer and you can have the work pieces and slurry will be continuously fed so that abrasives will be there and this slurry will also contain the chemical. The CMB combines the action of wet chemical etching with mechanical polishing that means that two individual processes were there that is called chemical etching and mechanical polishing these both are combined then called as a chemomechanical polishing. The mechanical component removes the wet etched residues leading to a highly planar surface that means that what it will do is your chemical that is used in the chemomechanical polishing will do the etching and makes the surface soft. Use of chemical reaction to soften the material and then the mechanically polish the layer and removes the surface texture and allows the multiple interconnect to be used. That means that what you use meaning is it can only passivate the surface layers so that it can, the abrasive particles can remove the surface and how this will be done and other things there is a some animation also will be there in the upcoming slides I will show you. Thickness of passivation layer depends on chemical reaction, kinetics and relative velocity and magnetic field. Sometimes you can also use the magnetic field based chemomechanical polishing. You will see one of the slides at the last where you can change or you can add chemomechanical polishing with respect to magnetorheological finishing also. So, currently you just forget about magnetic field and you can see here passivating field. I have a workpiece surface of this much surface. Whenever I am adding some chemical to it, what is happening? It is making a passivating layer. This passivating layer will become smooth. Assume that my workpiece hardness is H1 and the workpiece hardness is H2. H2 hardness of the workpiece, let me take in good ways abrasive. Now, workpiece hardness may be higher than hardness of the abrasive particle. In that circumstances, finishing is not possible okay? because the convention of basic metal cutting or basic abrasive processes will say that your tool should be harder than your workpiece material. Then what will happen? You are going to use a chemical so that you will get a passivating layer. Now, this passivating layer will be hardness will be HP. HP will be less than HA. That means that your abrasive particle will only take away the surfaces which are smooth enough. That means that your HW is greater than HA, greater than HP. In that circumstances, your workpiece hardness is higher than your ha abrasive hardness. So, abrasive cannot cut the original parental material. It can cut only the passivating layer that is clearly evident from this particular picture. So, you can see this is only cutting a passivating layer and in one go, in another go it will remove the passivating layer 
and makes the surface super finished. That is how the chemo mechanical polishing works and this animation shows you that only abrasive particles aim is to remove the passivating layer. It cannot do the original surface. If it cannot touch or it if it cannot remove or indent the any surface of the parent material that means that there would not be any scratch marks on the surface. So, why CMP? You can see here mechanical polishing process and chemical etching process and you see the material removal. The material removal is less here, but material removal is less in this region, but the surface roughness values are low in the chemo mechanical polishing, but the surface roughness values are high in chemical as well as in mechanical. If you are going to use only the abrasive particle obviously, the feed marks will be there. So, surface roughness is high. What your main aim is your material removal rate should be high that means, that you have to remove the material for unit time in a high, but surface roughness value should be low that means, that surface finish will be better. So, both things are achieved in chemo mechanical polishing your surface roughness is low, your material removal is high because this dotted curve represent the material removal. Both things are achieved in the CMP process, chemo mechanical polishing process. That is why chemo mechanical polishing can be a good alternative compared to individual mechanical process or individual chemical process. That is why this is considered in this particular super finishing processes. The principle of chemo mechanical polishing, how the chemo mechanical polishing, you can see the wafer is mounted on upside down. This is a wafer, it is upside down, it is mounted on this one. Then the carrier is pressed against the moving platen. Carrier means you have a polishing pad will be there. The carrier is rotated and the abrasive containing aqueous slurry will be continuously poured so that it will stay on the surface and the polishing action will be taken care. And the thin colloidal layer of the slurry which salute the pad which it forms because what will happen whenever you are putting a slurry your pad is rotating because of the centrifugal action the slurry will be distributed basically. The combination of mechanical effect and chemical reactions results in the material removal. That is why material remover more or less will be in the order of atomic because why it is says atomic level is nano level or atomic level it will be always there because you are going to release or if you going to remove only the passivating layer. That means, that original surface will be properly will be there and you will get a nano surface to atomic surface level. The CMP process conditions if you see normally the pressures 10 to 50 Pascal will be there, carrier RPM it will be 10 to 100 RPM will be there, velocity 10 to 100 centimeters per second, slurry flow rate will be there. Typical removal rates for oxides 2800 amps trunk per minute for metal CMP it is 3500 because metals are softer compared to the oxides. Now, we will see chemical aspects of material removal, what is the chemical structures of these chemicals, how this chemical is going to remove the material or how the chemical is going to make the surface passivate. Both influences both selectivity of the polish and removes rate the temperature also. The chemistry slurry pressure reaction of the film will take place and the softened film that is what the passivating layer I have said when you have this work piece whenever you put some chemical on top of it what will happen there will be a passivating layer. So, normally SiO2 will be used in aqueous solution oxide will form hydroxyls, hydrogen bonding is formed between the slurry and particle and the wafer, SiO bonds formed by releasing the water molecule and SiSi bonds break when the slurry particle moves away. That means, that you have a slurry is there this will form the bonding, then this slurry will take away the SI particle. That means, that the atom by atom or molecule by molecule the material removal takes place. That is why 
the surface roughness normally achieve is Armstrong level. Silicon polishing we will see here, silicon normally it will be done using a chemical, but that is commonly available chemical that is called water based chemicals or you can also use water also. And the copper normally copper uh, will be done again with water based and you can do the this one and the tungsten normally Fe Cn whole power 6 and water based it will be done. So, that means that these are the chemical reactions for silicon polishing and copper polishing and tungsten polishing. These are the common materials among that commonly used materials for the electronic industry is silicon. So, this particular process is tremendously or enormously used in terms of electronic industry. Mechanical aspects of material removal, when the abrasive particles are present in the slurry, then the substantial material removal takes place due to abrading. Basically what is mean by abrading means, it is just a rubbing action of the abrasive process that you have seen in the grinding process. And when there is no abrasive particle present in the slurry, normally the mechanical aspect of material removal lies purely in the mechanical friction present as a result of pressure. That means that you have a upside down plate will be there work piece and you have the pressure will be given from the carrier. So, abrasive particles are there, pressure plus abrasive particles will take part in the finishing process. If there is no abrasive particles because of the friction, because of the load that is given will decide the finishing. Finishing is carried out without letting the abrasive particle generate the brittle fracture on the work surface while removing this material minute steps by means of plastic deformation finally produce a mirror surfaces. That means that some of the passivating layers will form, this passivating layers might fracture and then come because if your work pieces are brittle in nature. This process detaches the material from the surface in the relative motion because relative motion is provided to the substrate, work piece substrate with the pad also because one is stationary and another one is rotationary. Then in this circumstances the polishing will take place at the same time relative also will be there. In one direction the pad will be rotating on another direction your work piece also can be rotated. So, this is again the mechanical aspect the polishing phenomena is termed as a two body abrasion. Normally if your abrasive particle is fixed and it is not rotating about its own axis then it is called two body. If it can be rotated about its about its axis normally CMP comes under three body abrasion. So, three body abrasion means your abrasive particle normally this is your pad your abrasive particles are there and your work piece will be there. So, if you are rotating it what will happen this abrasive particles also rotate about its own axis that means that this is three body abrasion. So, in terms of grinding process your grinding process what will happen your abrasives are fixed that is Whenever you do the work piece against this one, what will happen? This is called two body abrasion or 2D abrasion. The difference in removal mechanisms of this is put normally the two body abrasion will have three times higher material removal rate compared to three body abrasion. That means that three body abrasion is normally for finishing applications and two body abrasion is you can use for material removal application. That is why grinding basically will be currently used as a machining process. Usually this polishing technique consists of both mechanisms of either two body or three body depend on the polishing conditions. If you are going to give more load what will happen these abrasive particles will stay at certain location because there are pores on the pad polyurethane pad there are asperities this may obstruct the relative motion of this abrasive particles and they may stay at particular location. So, if you are input conditions are very high it is called two body abrasion. If you are input conditions are low then it is can be called as three body abrasion. Six possible pair wise interactions if you see here. So, fluid work piece, work piece pad, work piece abrasive particle, abrasive particle pad, pad fluid, fluid and abrasive particle can be and everything is here you can see and the three way interactions will be work piece will interact with fluid as well as abrasive particle granule means abrasive particle and work piece fluid and pad can interact work piece abrasive particle and pad can interact 
and fluid pad and abrasive particle can interact. These are the two way connections some are there and the three way connections are there. So, this particular process is random if your finishing process is more and more random you will get a better and better surface finish. Linear polishing system is one variety where you will have a belt based polishing pad will be continuously moving and you can apply a rotational motion to the your work piece and you can do the finishing process along with the slurry and you will have a conditioning pad also you will have a pad conditioner also this conditioner will make the pad proper for the next round. At the same time orbital polishing it is normal what you have seen you have a two disc and you will give the rotational motion to the work piece holding plate and the finishing will takes place. So, the polishing pad normally this will be porous flexible polymer made up of matrix of cast polyurethane foam with a pillar material and controls the hardness and polyurethane impregnates and felts. The filler normally the function of filler is to improve the mechanical properties and polyurethane have unique properties of combining high strength, high hardness and modulus combined with high elongation at failure. That is why most of the cases polyurethane is used in the finishing process or the pad finishing process or chemo mechanical polishing process also. The pad material should be durable, reproducible, compressible process temperature and other thing. Pad material should be durable, reproducible and compressible at all the process temperatures and cells absorb polishing slurry and execute the polishing action. That means that there are voids that you have seen on the surface of the polyurethane and there are asperities some of the asperities will be there. This should absorb the slurry and help the abrasive process to enhance its finishing and the chemical also should do the chemical etching process. So, that the surface will become smooth and the polishing will be done by mechanical action. Four classes of pads are there these are the varieties of classes one is uh, polymer impregnating felts the second category is microporous synthetic leathers this and the third category is filled with polymer films normally your pad will have polymer films and you can also fill. The fourth category is unfilled textured polymer films with major structural changes as well as felt fiber in the polymer binder. So, you have advanced polymers since this particular course is about polymer assisted abrasive finishing process you can use polymers you can use leathers in this case also at the same time filled polymers also you can use that means that you can fill some of the things or whenever you fill the slurries it can fill and you can do the polishing or advanced polymers also can be used in this process. Pad conditioning normally pad conditioning means you have to maintain its basic properties. So, the pad is subjected to CMP process normally removal rate begins to decrease rapidly over the time that means that this pad is constant one. So, you are going to use work pieces day by day assume that today you have used one work piece tomorrow you are going to use another work piece like that if you are going to increase number of work pieces what will happen pad is constant. So, this start deteriorating then what will happen the glazing pad rapidly glazed during the planarization process that means that some of the BTEC students who are watching they might have know this glazing word anyhow masters and PhD and faculty people may know what is glazing. If we have a grinding wheel whose grade that means that gripping of abrasive particle is very high with respect to a hard work piece what will happen neither the abrasive will be dislodged from the grinding wheel nor it can remove the material removal as per the requirements of the manufacturer. In that circumstances abrasive particles will wear out. What I mean to say is that this is my abrasive wheel I have abrasive particles if I am using hard grade versus hard work piece in that circumstances what will happen hard grade means it is held properly or tightly. So, it cannot dislodge in that circumstances this will goes off that means your abrasive particles will goes off these abrasive particles will goes off and it will stay inside 
sum of the inside that means that this surface will become smooth and glazed that means that it is looks very clean and glazed that is called a glazing. The pad becomes smoother due to the polishing need to recreate rough surface that means that this pad is like a dresser in a grinding wheel process or the grinding process dresser will be there you use the dresser diamond dresser what will happen the wheel will get the new abrasive particles again but the diameter in microns level it may reduce. So, this pad also become very smooth glaze for that purpose if you use a pad conditioner what will happen this will make the surface rough because your pad have asperities like this. This asperities will goes off if you are using for longer longer time what will happen your asperities goes off in that circumstances you use a pad conditioner and again it will regenerate the lateral asperities. You can see the pad conditioning the conditioner resurfaces the pad removes the used slurry and supplies the surface with fresh slurry that means that it is not only taking out the used slurry that means that my abrasive particle assume that this is my abrasive particle edges are gone. So, it is blunt in that circumstances what will happen it has to be replaced that pad conditioner try to replace the used slurry with a new slurry at the same time it will also resurfaces the asperities to come up. And you can clearly see the pad conditioner and micrographs and diamond distributions on the pad conditioner and other things. The pad conditioning in CMP this pores the pad become closed reducing the slurry delivery to the wafer and causing an unable and lower the material removal rate if you do not do the pad conditioning and can be achieved by the pad conditioning which open up the pores because this becomes smooth means the pores are completely filled with the used slurry. So, you have to take out that one then only it will do its original function so that you can pour the next phase of new slurry. Typically diamond disc swept across the polyurethane pad surface to obtain the stable process and maintain the consistent material remold that means that it will act as a dressing material. There in the grinding wheel you have to use a diamond dresser so that you will do the dressing operation here also you have to use a diamond disc so that the pad conditioning will be done. Now, how the pad will be fabricated? So, chemomechanical polishing pad you take the master first then you put some silicon rubber casting in a gel form then you take out the silicon mold then you just put some hard casting layers on it then you followed by soft casting layers and now you can remove this one by demolding process what you are going to get is some patterns. These patterns for example, if you see the fabrication of pad you will be there at the bottom. This is proprietary from company to company they will have their own different different patterns of the pads. That is what you can see here on the scanning electron microscopy, but whenever you see in a naked eye it will look a simple nothing is there on it. For a view of this pad and other things you have to zoom it up and you have to check then only you can see the surfaces and how the fabrication is done on the surfaces. Polishing pad normally pad hardness controlled during the polymerization process and the qualified by the Young's modulus normally 0.2 GPA hard pad, 0.5 GPA medium pad, 0.1 GPA will be soft pad there are three varieties and pad asperities you can also maintain the pore diameters. If the pore diameter is approximately 3 30 to 50 microns and peak to peak normally will, it will be like 200 to 300 in the polishing pad of chemomechanical polishing. Now, you can see the atomic force microscopy image of the pad. So, there are three regions one is a reaction region the red ones whatever the red ones which are visible that is called the reaction region. The green ones is transition region and the blue ones which are there is the reservoir region that means that your pad should do multiple actions and perform multiple jobs. So, the top layer will do the chemical reaction with the respect to the workpiece 
and the transition layer will always work between the reservoir and reaction. If the chemical is incomplete or insufficient, the reservoir will supply to the reaction region. At the same time, what you have to observe here is how the surface is made here. Polyurethane surface having asperities as well as pits. These are the pits are there and some places asperities are there. Okay. These asperities and holes will hold the abrasive slurry which is also combination of the chemical. The chemical will do the chemical etching and abrasive particle will do the polishing action and the reservoir keeps the abundant amount that is required for the polishing action. Okay. The temperature on polishing pad whenever it is subjected to a elevated temperatures due to frictional forces and other things solid solid contact will be there and local heating pad may rises approximately up to 30 degrees which is may not be that much and the effect of pad heating is compounded if the chemical reaction between slurry and pad is exothermic normally depend on the chemical reactions endothermic exothermic will be there whenever exothermic reactions are there heat will produce and there will be a problem in the pad. The mechanical and physical and chemical properties of the polyurethane mechanical permanently or temporarily alter the heating beyond the limit. So, the temperature average over the pad wafer contact area and may increase significantly especially at the localized point only. That means that whenever there is a more and more friction what will happen is that localized heat will be taken place to avoid additional pressure pad is operated at the temperature range below which its coefficient of thermal expansion is 0. That means that normally polyurethane and other polymers are temperature resistive. So, they would not deteriorate that much fast. At the same time and the operator or the manufacturing engineer should be much cautious they have to operate below the temperature where the thermal coefficient of expansion should not increase. That means that it should be stable around 0. Slurry, the slurry consists of small abrasive particles specified in the range of 10 to 1000 nanometers. That means that its abrasive particles are very super fine and these are suspended in aqueous solution. As I said for silicon normally people use aqueous solution. The chemicals that slurry react with the surface material and the chemical compounds can be removed by the abrasive particles and should be easily cleaned from the vapor surface. That means that if we have abrasive particles held on the uh, surface and other things what will happen it is required tremendous cleaning procedures, but ideally the slurry should be easily cleanable. So, if it is water there is no problem. The slurry mechanically abrade the work vapor surface and removes the surface material on the other hand additives in the slurry solution react to the surface materials or particulates dissolve the surface material or as we have seen the passivating layer is it will develop a soft layer and forms the compounds and which can be removed by the abrasive particles. This is same that explained in the earlier slide whenever you have a chemical it will make a passive layer or it try to dissolve make smooth so that abrasive particle can shear it very easily. So, CMP slurry could be able to achieve high material removal and excellent planarization, good surface and less defect. It should not react much with the wafer because wafer is the one that is directly in contact with the workpiece and if the chemical it is going to destroy the wafer that means that that is uh, biggest problem for the chemomechanical process. That is why slurry flow if you see deionized water and suspensions that means that abrasive suspensions and pH adjuster and oxidant will all mix at the mixer then it will be submitted to the chemomechanical polishing tool. So, these are all can be controlled by liquid flow controller everything will have the liquid flow controller how much I want whether 10 ml of DI plus suspension or 2 ml of pH adjuster or 5 ml of oxidant how we require. Oxidant normally will do the oxidation process of the workpiece surface because that is normally a metal then the polymer based polyurethane pad may not get oxidation because it is a basically polymer. So, abrasive slurry 
basically there are two varieties of abrasive slurries you can see that is called uh, oxide slurries and metal slurries so in oxide slurries we have fumed silica and colloidal silica so fumed silica is nothing but the sio2 and it can form like this and the colloidal silica will be another variety now you can see the surface morphology of fumed silica this will be not as spherical as the colloidal silica looks like that's why colloidal silica will give better results at the same time you can also go for metallic slurry where your feno3 and other based metallic slurry also can be used in a abrasive in a cmp process okay that is commonly used abrasive slurries are fumed silica as well as colloidal silica the other parameters of cmp there are many many parameters if i start teaching it will be big lecture basically so some of the people who are interested to know about these processes lot of papers are there which you can read so cmp itself will be one of the courses in particular semesters in abroad nations like taiwan and uh, us and other places cmp process is a semester course so you can go through those courses slurry flow rate how much flow rate i have to use the abrasive particles along with the chemicals that can be controlled in the slurry flow and the particle uh, less slurry whether i want to use along with the particle or i don't want to use if i am not going to use what will happen the mechanical action will be slightly reduced and it will be depend on the friction between your pad as well as your work piece only so abrasive particle surface coating whether if you want any advanced abrasive particles like functionalizing the abrasive particles and other things and abrasive particle size if you are going to use fine then you will get a better surface if you are going to use a core abrasive particles then you will get a rough surface so what is the surface roughness that you want according to that you have to choose the particle size now the particle concentration if you are going to use more and more number of particles that means if the abrasive particle concentration is high the finishing rate will be high and the finishing time will be reduced material removal rate in terms of chemomechanical polishing one of the most important and basic performance measure in the chemical mechanical polishing is material removal rate this is usually represented by this particular equation where r equal to kp rho delta v where p is the polishing pressure kp is piston coefficient and delta v is relative velocity between the wafer and the pad this normally represented as piston equation so this equation represents the how much material is removed from the work piece in a chemomechanical polishing but every process will have its own issues you can see here surface some of the defects will be there em embodied particle that means that your particle can embed inside the polyurethane foam rip out so some of the material can come out at the same time residual slurry will remain on the pad itself even though the conditioning is done still there will be some residual slurry will be there 100% nobody can clean the surface micro scratches you can see the micro scratches can be done on the pads which can reflect like this at the same time dishing so at the edges there will be some of the material that will goes off similarly the top view these are all shows the top view and this shows the schematic side view okay so that you can see the basic issues in the chemomechanical polishing especially in the pad see this is what i want to tell you that whenever you understood certain process you should understand what is its applications so one of the hybrid chemomechanical polishing itself is a hybrid how chemomechanical polishing is combination of chemical etching plus mechanical abrasion chemical etching plus mechanical abrasion this will give the chemomechanical polishing that's why chemomechanical polishing itself is a one of the hybrid polymer based finishing process 
if you are going to add this particular process with magnetorheological finishing where your magnetorheology where iron particles are there regarding magnetorheological finishing process you will go through in the upcoming slides where I will just give you a glimpse of 2 3 slides whenever you are going to study about magneto abrasive flow finishing process where magnetic field will be used for finishing along with the polymer abrasive medium. There you will see the what is magnetological finishing. If these two processes are combined then you get a very super fine surfaces on metals especially soft metals as well as brittle materials also. Normally finishing is very difficult in soft metals because indentation resistance is very low that is why getting a super fine surface on soft materials like copper aluminum is very difficult, but you can get very good surface on silicon and other hard and brittle materials. I am very thankful for this particular slide to Prabhat Ranjan as well as uh, Professor V K Jain and uh, Dr. Balasubramanyam from Baba Atomic Research Center to share the slide. And general applications of chemomechanical polishing you can see that it can be extended to different materials like aluminum, copper, platinum, titanium, tantalum and other things. Polishing of the different insulating materials SiO2, Si3, N4 and other things. Ceramics also can be polished like uh, silicon carbide and other optical opto electronic components, flat panel displays, MEMS, magnetic recording heads and CDs these are all can be polished using CMP. CMP process will have tremendous applications if you can master in it and if you can make a CMP process that means that you have a good market across the globe. Okay. Thank you for your kind attention for this particular class.